Good morning and welcome to Trail Grazers where we focus on good food for the trail. Today we are going to emphasize breakfasts once again, only not the sugary cereal breakfast fun that we did last time, but these are good nutritious breakfasts. Uh, first of all, I do want to announce that um, on August 3rd, 4th and 5th, we are going to have a big birthday bash book sale in our bookstore. All of our books, except of course the two free downloads, will be 20% off across the board, every book. And so it's a wonderful opportunity for those of you that would like to add um, more roast red writing to your um, cooking and preparedness repertoires. It's called the Big Birthday Bash because on the 3rd, I turn 79. That's my birthday. On the 4th, my grandfather, were he still alive, would be 123 years old. And my grandson, whose birthday is on the 5th of August, um, is in his mid-20s, will be turning, I think, 26, maybe. I would have to go back and look at my records to check to be sure. So we're celebrating three birthdays for three days for a great 20% off sale. And there are several books there that I think would be pertinent to those of you who are... Um, a part of Trail Grazers, but may not be part of Rose Red Homestead. So today, um, I am going to be doing a sheet pan breakfast sandwich. Now, um, I'm kind of double dipping on this because I have started a new preparedness book uh, that will be published in a couple of months or so on um, meals that are nutrient dense. One of my reasons for doing this is because over on Rose Red, there are several thousand of us over there who are working on a food plan to help us manage our weight a little bit better. And so using nutrient-dense foods really helps with that. So this recipe that we're going to be doing is one that is going to be in that cookbook, and it is one that has very high nutrient density. And um, that's our oven who's telling us it's ready to go. So we're going to hustle up here in just a minute. Um, this is a page out of the cookbook. I've, it's messed up because I've been using it this morning. But the recipe is over here. And then the nutrition information for every recipe will be right there. So you can see this particular recipe is a little sandwich that we're going to be doing, an egg sandwich that we bake. And then we are going to freeze dry it to test to see how it works that way. Uh, then it will fit into um, a whole wheat English muffin. And I have those um, halfway finished uh, outside on the griddle. In um, They're rising. They're doing their last proofing out there right now. So when we get finished with everything, we'll have some fresh whole wheat English muffins to work with. And the breakfast sandwich, including the English muffin, is only 340 calories, but it has 21 grams of protein. And that's what I look for. I like my meals to have about 30 grams of protein, so I get 90 grams of protein per day. That is my particular um, weight loss strategy, one that I worked with a doctor with for about three years, and it was successful. So here is this recipe. And it will be in the book, but I am going to verbally tell it to you so that you can uh, write it down if you wish. There are 18 eggs right here. So the next thing that I'm going to do to these eggs is I'm going to add a half a cup of milk, and this is whole milk. Then I'm going to add the spices, and it is one teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon of pepper, two teaspoons of chili powder, and a half a teaspoon of cumin. I'm going to put the lid on and then we are going to gently blend it. Now once we have done that, then I'm just going to put it in this sheet pan which I have sprayed liberally with a baking spray. So. Here go the eggs and the spices. Mm. 
this will feed a crowd of 12, or um, you can pack them away and pull them out one at a time when they are needed. Now these freeze beautifully, but when I freeze them, I would toast the English muffin, butter it, stick a sandwich that has been cooked in the oven inside, enclose that in a little baggie, and then freeze those. We are now going to try freeze drying just the egg part to see how it will reconstitute, and then we'll deal with that after we're finished. So when these are out of the oven, they'll be completely cooked. I'm going to cut this into 12 square sandwiches, and then we will put them on a freeze drying tray and freeze dry them along with, I'm also going to try with this particular batch, this is not enough to fill our freeze dryer. I'm going to do some of our, our standard recipe of scrambled eggs, which I will also show you in a minute. Now this is a cup of bell peppers. Now these happen to be freeze dried, and this is the tricolor freeze dry mix that I use. And when I um, reconstitute either bell peppers or onions, which there's a fourth of a cup of onions in here as well. So one cup of chopped peppers, one fourth of a cup of onion, and these were freeze dried. I just measure out exactly the amount that's called for in the recipe. Then I fill this bowl with water, Within five minutes, they were reconstituted. I drained the water off, and this is what is left. So I'm going to be sprinkling these around. Kind of evenly distribute. This is four strips of bacon that I have cooked and crumbled. They are also going to be distributed as evenly as I can around. It, this is a pretty little sandwich, very colorful, very nutritious, a lot of high nutrition. And four pieces of bacon for 12 sandwiches is not too much fat. Then I have a 10 ounce package of chopped leaf spinach that I have squeezed all the water out of. And um, actually this is more than a 10 ounce package, but I'm only going to use about 10 ounces of it. I think that you could also use fresh spinach that has been chopped. This is just very convenient if you don't happen to have fresh spinach. This was uh, 16 ounces, so I'm going to be guessing about what 10 ounces is. The reason I want to follow the recipe exactly this time is because I want it to match what the nutritional information says. All right, that's about it. Then last of all, I have some triple blend spicy Mexican cheese that we're going to put over the top. And because we are watching our nutrition and don't want too much saturated fat, this is not going to be slathered with cheese. It is going to be a sprinkling, which will give us the flavor, but not the calories or the fat. And this is what it looks like when it is ready to go into the oven. We're going to put this in the oven, and then we're going to cook it. We may have to rotate it. We're baking it in a 300 degree oven, slowly, just until the egg is set. So we will get this going in the oven, and then I'll show you what I'm going to do with our scrambled eggs. When I do scrambled eggs, I'm just an opportunist. I don't have a recipe per se that I stick to. I have another 18 eggs here in the blender, and because I used about half a package of this Mexican spicy blend cheese, and it's right here, I'm just going to use that. So I'm going to put that in. And then uh, we like huevos rancheros, which is uh, adding a little salsa. And I, in the refrigerator, I have two jars of this salsa that are partially gone. So I'm just going to add those. Sometimes I'll add onions. Sometimes I'll add bell peppers. 
Um, sometimes I add little bacon bits or whatever. Sometimes I add a lot more cheese because I have a husband who really loves cheese. And now I'm just going to gently blend it. And that's all there is to it. Now it's going to go in this great big frying pan over here and I'm going to scramble it as normal. And then I'm going to put it in one of our um, freeze dryer pans and you'll be able to see the finished product ready to go into the freeze dryer when we come back. Well, I am excited, <laughs> bad pun, to uh, share with you the results of what we have done so far. So here is our sheet pan egg sandwich mixture all out of the oven. It has been cooling for about 15 minutes or so. I'm going to cut it. But, and here are the muffins that I just took out off the griddle. Uh, they're too hot to deal with right now. But if we cut this into 12 pieces, these are going to be about four inches, almost four inches square. And so if, if we look at that, this is one of my muffin rings, there's gonna be a lot of hangover all the way around if we make a sandwich out of it, which is okay. But there are a lot of different ways that we could serve this. We could just serve this, um, this egg, what should we call it, that this egg... Scramble? It is not exactly a scramble, but um, this egg dish separately, um, it is almost like a frittata, so, sort of. Um, but we could serve a square of that with an English muffin on the side. Or here's my biscuit cutter. I could even cut rounds that exactly fit these. Now these, um, these homemade muffins are a little bit smaller than those that you would see in the store. So if you purchase the muffins, they would fit better on this. But here's what I think that I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and cut half the pan. Notice that I've put toothpicks to help me be straight on my cutting. <laughs> Didn't help. <laughs> so I am going to just get in here and get one of these out and we're going to take a look at it. So they're quite thin but I bet they're really good. And so I'm going to just put six of these on this tray, if I can fit six. I probably can't. I can fit four. Or you could start cutting them in half. I can cut them in half, which is probably what I'm going to do. at least some of them. They handle nicely. And then I have a little piece left over. I'm actually going to take a little taste of this to see what it tastes like. It's very good. The vegetables make it very, very nice. That chili powder gives it just a little bit of interesting flavor, not too bad at all for those of us that are a little sensitive to quite a bit of heat. So it's just pretty perfect. And then, I think what I'm going to do is, um, with the other half of this pan, since I have two batches of just regular eggs ready to go in these two trays, the scrambled eggs turned out great. Here is our um, egg sandwich filling. And then I have a half a sheet pan left. I could have done another tray with it. But I think what I'm going to do is 
I think I'm going to cut with these. I will have some scraps left over, obviously, that I will not waste. So we'll either eat those for lunch today or um, I can freeze them and use them later. Um, these would be really good in MREs, so would the scrambled eggs. So let's see how this does if I just cut these. So that's cute. And then that would fit right in here perfectly. We could even double stack them if necessary. So I can almost get three across. I'm just going to force it to three across. That will work. All right, I'm going to play some more. But these I think I'm going to freeze. And then I could just freeze two of these with a toasted and buttered bun. And then I would have something that I could just take right out of the freezer and take with us on a car trip and um, have breakfast. If we were to stay in a hotel that didn't have a breakfast or that we didn't like what they were serving, these would be really quick and easy just to heat up in our little car oven. So the um, refrigerate, the Kelvin, the freeze dryer is chilling. And as soon as the temperature is ready for us we will be out there and bring you out there and we'll put all of this egg stuff in the freeze dryer and begin it's probably going to take a couple of days so we'll see you out there in just a few minutes kelvin is ready the air conditioner is going to keep it cool in here cool enough for kelvin he doesn't like it when it's hot and we are ready to load the trays so we're going to do that I have decided to call this veggie egg bake. And then here's our scrambled eggs. And here is one tray with regular eggs that I always wait to pour until I'm putting it in the freeze dryer for obvious reasons. That is 18 eggs. And then here's the other one. So we have some fun new ways to work with um, on eggs on the trail. So I'm going to close the vent. Now the vacuum can form when it's ready. And we'll just go continue. And now it is freezing. This is going to take at least two days. So we'll be back in a couple of days. Good morning. Oh, forgive my work clothes. I got up really early this morning. I am refinishing all of our slate floors. Um, I'm all washed and clean now, and we're going to finish up this video. So the dehydrating of these three different types of eggs took 42 hours. So it was a longer session. And of course, we've done the um, regular eggs before. Um, and then scrambled eggs are new, and this egg veggie bake is new. I want to rehydrate both of these um, as a first step this morning in what we are doing um, so that because I've not done scrambled eggs before and I'm wanting to see how long it takes them to rehydrate. So I'm just putting them in a little bit of water right here and we're just going to let them sit. And then over here, I'm going to try something a little bit new um, because the water... Now the eggs are floating. I maybe should have done that to this too. But I'm just going to take one of these little wedges and put it in the bag and put water in the bag. And then I'm going to take the air out. So the egg is completely submerged. And so we'll let it do its thing as well, right here. Now I wanna talk about this one for just a minute. So these are my homemade English muffins and the last two mornings while this was in the freeze dryer, I had one of the little egg sandwiches with the leftovers that um, I did not freeze dry. And you know, you could take this, maybe a couple of these, and put inside a sandwich 
split this and put them inside and, um, and it would work just fine. These <laughs> are a little too big. So as you can see, there would be quite a bit of hangover here. Um, and so with these, these would fit, it looks to me, they would fit great in just a regular uh, slice of bread. So a couple of slices of bread with one of these as a sandwich would also work very well. And the um, uh, trick now is, to going, is going to see how they rehydrate and how long it takes. So while those are working, I'm going to go ahead and uh, do these eggs. And you've seen me do these eggs before. You've seen me do them, or at least I've done videos, whether or not you've seen them, I'm not sure. But I have done videos where I put these in the blender and blend them up into a fine powder. Then I've put them in a plastic bag and just squish them up with my hands, which works really well. So I just can squish them just like this, which is what I pretty much do. And one of our viewers suggested, just why don't you just roll it in the plastic bag in a rolling pin? Well, I have done that before, and I didn't realize that I had not shown that before. And so, and this bag is open so the air can escape. So I'm going to just give this a little bit of treatment with my rolling pin. And this also works fantastic. It gets it nice and fine. And of course, the finer it is, the easier it is to reconstitute. Now, here is the thing with eggs. All right, these are pretty good. Now, with my freeze-dried eggs, um, a lot of people have different opinions on how much of the egg powder you use to reconstitute. I took my cue from a number 10 can of Augustine Farms eggs uh, that are very similar to these, and they say two tablespoons powder with two tablespoons water. And so that is the reconstitution uh, proportion that I use. And it, th this is almost instant. And you just put two tablespoons in a bowl with a couple of tablespoons of water. The great thing about these eggs is that you can use them in place of eggs in pretty much all of your baking, making pancakes, making cakes, or whatever. And well, these are so very, very versatile. So I'm going to go ahead and finish up these eggs and the other tray of eggs, and then we'll be back to deal with the other things. All right, we are back. So I... I've already sealed these. This is 36 eggs. Isn't this incredible? Ready to go. I can't ever get enough eggs. I use them all the time in my regular baking, even when making scrambled eggs in the morning. Sometimes I will reconstitute these and uh, make scrambled eggs that way. Now, speaking of scrambled eggs, this I am just going to put these in a jar and we're going to vacuum seal. Now this is my new little vacuum seal, battery operated vacuum seal that was sent to us through the mail by one of our subscribers who wanted us. She loved it and said, I hope you love this too. And boy, do I ever love it. It is so easy to use on these jars and it has a setting for regular mouth and for reg um, wide mouth, which is what this is. And I just push the go button and the battery takes care of it. You can notice a little bit of difference in the sound when it is all ready. It takes about 30 seconds to 40 seconds to get it all the way done, and then it seals just fine. That's 30 seconds. Let's test it. Oh yeah, just perfect. Now these will go out in our food bank and we'll want to use both of these within a year or two to preserve their freshness. Now for these, they don't fit in a jar. I don't want to vacuum seal them in this because I don't want these broken. I want to maintain this shape so that it will work well for making sandwiches. So I have decided to just put them in a Mylar bag with an oxygen absorber and then seal it, but not vacuum seal it. 
just seal it with an oxygen absorber and that should uh, preserve it. Now, I can't show that online today because in our brand new cabinet that we haven't even finished paying the final bill for yet because we're waiting for the, um, our contractor to come and do a couple of last minute things before we're gonna pay them for this uh, kitchen remodel, the door has broken and I can't get in to get my vacuum sealer out. So I have another one out in the Kelvin lab that I will do a little bit later. But these are gonna fit right in here just fine and then I will open this and then rehydrate them um, as needed. All right, so let's go to where we are rehydrating our samples. And I've sort of been checking these and they're both doing very, very well. So they're both done as near as I can tell. Now, the interesting thing about this, where with egg powder, you need to reconstitute. You can't just put an indiscriminate amount of water in and then turn it into um, an egg equivalent. This has to be measured, and that is called reconstituting, reestablishing it back to where it was. Now, with these that are already cooked, because those are raw eggs, um, you saw me just drain extra water. So they have absorbed only the water that they are going to need in order to rehydrate, pull that water back into the cell. And I think that this one has done the very same thing. So I'm going to dump the water out here. and slide it out on the plate. Oh look, it has maintained its togetherness. So now I'm going to taste these to see how they do. First for the scrambled eggs. Now of course, um, these are cool, um, but I could just zap these in the microwave for a moment and make them hot, but I, I don't need to in order to just taste. So I'm gonna take a little taste. I tasted the scrambled eggs when they were dry, just out of the freeze dryer, and they tasted fantastic. You could even eat them for a snack, but you would need to have some water nearby because they're quite dry. Mm, they're perfect. Oh my goodness. They have rehydrated to the exact consistency of scrambled eggs. I am just thrilled. This means that I can do MREs with those, or I can take them camping just as they are and then um, just simply rehydrate them for breakfast in the morning. It really, they were ready in about five minutes, so that is just great. I'm tickled about that. So now let's try this, a bite of this one. So I have some spinach and some pepper, some onions, and of course some egg. Perfect as well. It tastes, I wouldn't even know if I were familiar with the taste of this when it comes out of the oven, I would never know that this one had been freeze dried and um, rehydrated. So rehydrated scrambled eggs, rehydrated egg veggie bake worked perfectly. Our egg uh, powder always does fantastic. So this was just great. We now have more egg versatility for uh, meals on the trail, which I'm very excited about. So thank you so much for joining us and we hope to see you out on the trail very soon.